Research has found that, just like mechanical contraptions, the human mind warms up when it works, its temperature climbing to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, rather than the remainder of the body's 96. Although such a temperature show that the mind is sound, uncommon intensity marks could specify cerebrum harm or a disorder. 4. D guides of mind temperatures over the course of the day show that female cerebrums are somewhat hotter than male cerebrums, perhaps in view of the monthly cycle. Minds are cooler around evening time and hotter during the day, while more seasoned individual cerebrums will generally run more hot than those of more youthful people. According to an article, researchers have found that inhaled ultra-fine toxic air pollution particles can move from the lungs into the bloodstream, invading the brain and attaching to tissue, where the particles can remain. The invasion point appears to be the blood-brain barrier, which Harvard Medical School describes it as a physical separation between the brain and the circulatory system. Researchers found this possibility alarming since such invasive particles which include calcium, iron, malate eat, and anatus titanium dioxide, can cause neuroinflammation and severe cognitive decline. Face blindness, or prosopagnosia, is a neurological disorder characterized by the inability to recognize familiar faces. Although those who suffer from the condition are aware that they are perceiving a face, they are unable to tell whose face they are seeing, sometimes even when the face is that of a family member or themselves. As a celebrity, Brad Pitt, who suffers from the condition puts a human face on the disorder, he revealed that people often do not believe that he cannot recognize or identify their faces. Although he may feel alone, Pitt is not, according to the National Health Service, 1 in 50 people are affected by prosopagnosia, which could be caused by abnormalities in a part of the brain called the fusiform gyrus. Can the brain be rewired, so to speak? The answer seems to be maybe. Psilocybin mushrooms could represent a treatment for major depressive disorders, which often resist traditional medical treatment. Food and Drug Administration refers to psilocybin as a potential breakthrough therapy. Once the intestines convert psilocybin, a chemical with psychoactive properties, could be used to treat ailments, including cluster headaches, anxiety, anorexia, any compulsive disorder, and forms of substance abuse and traumatic stress disorder. Psilocybin can break the obsessive hold that self-critical and negative, anxious, or fearful thoughts have on depressed individuals. This allows more flexible thinking and, researchers contend, permits the brain's neurons to develop new dendrites, which facilitates communication between brain cells and, in turn, builds and solidifies new circuits in the brain. However, Matthew Johnson, a professor in psychedelics and consciousness at Johns Hopkins Medicine, cautions that a psychedelic doesn't work for everyone. In order to perform efficiently, the human brain ignores irrelevant data, focusing exclusively on information pertinent to whatever task it is performing at the moment. According to neuroscientists, the brain adopts tunnel vision or maximizes performance while minimizing cost by using data compression. As a result of the research that Christian Machens and Joe Patton conducted, principles can guide future studies concerning how mental constructs of the world might support intelligent behavior in the context of life sciences and I. Black and white post-mortem photographs and tissue samples of Albert Einstein's brain, as well as autopsy results, showed not only typical characteristics but also several unusual features. His brain exhibited changes that accompany aging, and two parts of his brain contained an unusually large number of non-neural cells called glia for every neuron, but the genius's parietal lobe lacked a furrow and a structure called the operculum. It is believed that the missing furrow may have enhanced the connections in this region, which is thought to be involved in visual spatial functions and mathematical skills. Another striking feature of Einstein's brain lies in the complexity and pattern of convolutions on certain parts of Einstein's cerebral cortex, which increased the region's surface area and could have contributed to his remarkable abilities. 
One of the facts about the theoretical physicist that may be especially surprising to many is the fact that Einstein's brain was actually smaller than average. There's no mistaking the von Economo neuron, named in honor of anatomist Constantine von Economo, it's big and distinctive in appearance, and it's found in the brains of humans and animals alike. Well, in the brains of some animals, mostly larger ones, such as great apes, whales, dolphins, cows, and elephants, scientists theorize that it evolved independently in big brain or especially social animals. The neuron is absent in people with some brain diseases, and overabundant among super-agers, older people who don't experience the standard memory loss of aging. MRI scans of the human brain reveal that humans are hardwired to derive pleasure from unexpected events, surprises, in particular, elicit strong responses from the nucleus accumbens, known as the brain's pleasure center. Assistant professor of psychiatry at Emory University explained, birthday gifts are good to receive, but presents received on other days are better because they're unexpected, surprises, when good, cause a rush of dopamine that lights up the nucleus. Not surprisingly, perhaps, neuroimaging reveals that the brain also reacts to horror movies, especially when such films build toward the shocking or horrific event rather than hitting the audience with a jump scare. There's no flood of dopamine, instead, areas of the brain associated with visual and auditory processing are more active when anxiety slowly increases during horror movies, a lot goes on inside the brain after such a moment. Areas associated with emotional processing, threat evaluation, and decision-making increase in activity, in every movie, protagonists, experience conflict, as they encounter threats to their safety, if not perils to their very existence. However, horror movies rise above other genres of film by upping the ante by having some kind of superhuman or supernatural threat that cannot be reasoned with or fought easily. In one study, subjects watched horror movies while they were inside a magnetic resonance imaging scanner that measured their neural activity, results showed that, as anxiety increased, their brains became more active, seeking environmental cues. On the other hand, Introducing sudden and unexpected shocks stimulated areas of their brains associated with emotion processing, threat evaluation, and decision-making, enabling a rapid response. Nevertheless, the latter parts of the brain remain in continuous communication with the former, to facilitate responses to perceived threats. I hope you enjoyed this video please like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.